Welcome to the Senior Podcast Show. I'm your host, Corey Lear. I'm the Director of Communications for the Senior Companies. As always, I am here with two very special guests. I am so glad that we finally have you here, <laughs> <Finally>. Mike. <laughs> finally. Um, there has been, been some planning in the works, but you are here to talk about a very important topic. We are. Yeah. So, so welcome to you, Mike. And then, of course, I have the Senior Company's founder and CEO, Paul Burkhart. Hi, Corey. I'm happy to have you back. Paul Hi, always brings some Hi, extra excitement to the show. We're going to have a good topic. I think so, too. So you are a funeral director with 20 years experience. I am. I just celebrated uh, my 25th anniversary. Just got a pin from the Michigan <laughs> Funeral Directors Association last week. That's awesome. It is. That's actually a really big deal. It is a big deal. I'm something I'm proud of. You should be proud of that because I feel like life service. this is yes. it is a life service and, and it's a a serving service. It is. Because it really is. you are consistently putting others first. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. How did you get into this industry? I started in this industry playing hide and seek in the funeral home as a kid. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it, it really, most people can't say that. So my parents and the Wuchaks and Calcateers all grew up together. They dated each other. They went to uh, dances together and all that and then weddings. And so we have a great history with the Wuchaks and Calcateras. And I started working there in high school. Um, was going to go to dental school, but my dentist talked me out of it. Really? He yeah. wouldn't let you pay hide and seek there? No. That, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you don't want to do this, trust me. So I just was starting at the funeral home more and more and uh, liked it and worked more days and on funerals and um, and just fell in love with it. And ended up going to Wayne State uh, back in, in 1997, graduated from mortuary school and have been there um, since got out of high school in 94. Did you say, if I go through this, you guys are going to hire me, right? I, yeah, I talked to, I talked to, to Mr. Calcaterra. I just want to make sure yeah. that this is a go before I do this. I'm going to have a job when yes. I'm done. So he, he assured me, he said, no problems. Uh, welcome me with open arms. So it was great. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's hard to believe it's been you know that long already. Time flies. Time does go by quick. Say now you now you know every place to hide. Exactly. <laughs> really. In more than one location. Exactly. <laughs> So you, 25 years is an amazing mm -hmm. career. What are some of the things as far as planning for that people should do, but you find that they're not doing? Because obviously we, we all have one thing in common at the end of the day. That's going to, you know, we will pass. For sure. And it's always the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Right. But didn't. You know, we were going to come in. We should have came in. We wanted to come in, but we didn't. And so I get it. It's an uncomfortable conversation. No one wants to face their, their mortality. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone always kind of kicks the can, so to speak, down the curb until the day something happens. And when something happens and someone's been on hospice or been in, in a nursing home for so long and they say, you know, they're just overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed for being up for three, five, ten days in a row, you know, with their loved one, watching them transition. Um, and then they come in, and then they have to sit with us for several hours to go over the most minute details from churches to flowers to cemeteries to what are we going to do? And, you know, it's a lot of decisions and a lot of time that – and it's a lot of stress. Yes. You know, and when people leave, they leave like they just went through a hurricane, you know, and live through a hurricane – um, when all of this can be handled ahead of time. But you just have to have the courage to come in to say, I'm going to talk about this, I want to get this done, and I'll get it done and I'll put it in the file and I'll go on living until the day I need it. And so selfishly, we love people that come in and do things like this ahead of time. Um, and so because when something happens, we just go to a file, open it up and say, here's what mom, here's what dad, here's what grandma all spelled out for you. Yeah. You, you had, the only thing I needed is clothes and a photo. Everything's done. Everything's done. How often does that happen? Would you say? Um, it's ha you know it's happening more and more. I, I really took a um, it really interest in doing things like this, and I we hold seminars a couple times a year. And we go out much to what we're doing here on the senior podcast is we go out and we have seminars and just educate people the benefit of doing this and people to this day are still astounded. Like, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could pay for this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could pick all these things out. So, you know, this started probably about eight years ago that we really kind of went hot and heavy at it, if you will. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of starting to reap the, the benefits of that and, and just opening those files and, and just, the, just the sure, 
you know, it, just the sure relief when kids come in and say, I never knew mom and dad did this, but I'm so glad that they did this. Especially, not everybody has to have some sort of illness or be on hospice to no. do this type of planning either. No. Even just as you start to age naturally, yep. getting that in place is huge for the family and friends. It's huge, you know. Especially if it's a, a shock. I, I agree. So, you know, it's every gamut. You know, in pre-planning, it's just not when someone's given a hospice right. diagnosis. I mean, I think pre-planning has multiple facets mm -hmm. that goes into asset planning. That goes into nursing home, long-term nursing home plans, Medicaid situations, veterans. Um, I mean, there's so many different facets besides just putting your wishes on paper that complements life and why it's so important to do this ahead of time. You're absolutely right. That's definitely been our philosophy. That's actually where the basis of this show began. We started getting all these calls and all these different questions and we're like, we need to get resources together because obviously we like to pretend we know everything, but we don't. And, and there's so, a need for it. Exactly. Yes. There's a yes. huge need for it. That's why we did estate planning. We've done long-term care insurance. Yep. We've done hospice and things like that because when you have that basis of that information, yep. you feel more confident and ready to start making those decisions or ask those questions or reach out to someone like you. And Absolutely. Because again, how many times in your life do you plan a funeral? Right. There's not many. Yeah. You know, you plan birthday parties, you plan retirements, you plan, you know, all of life celebrations. Mm -hmm. How many times do you realistically plan a funeral? Once, maybe twice, you know? And so it's a lot of it's a deer in the headlights. People just don't know all the complexities. And again, I'm not talking about a huge pomp and circumstance funeral. It's really any funeral. Whether you have a lot or you have a little, just all the complexities that go into this. Especially the emotional ones. Yes. I mean, celebrating a birthday is great, right? We're yes. not yes. emotionally disturbed, no. <laughs> hopefully. No. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> but the fact that it's a, uh, a service that's not at the forefront of somebody's mind, it's, it's great. And I'm glad you're here so that we can help the cause and getting it into people's minds sooner at a time where it's maybe not as stressful and anxiety. Absolutely. And like you said, getting it off of the the plate, so to say, or at least arranged so that, you know, inevitably that time comes and it just makes it uh, all together more comfortably. And so I think the message, not necessarily from a funeral director standpoint, but from a senior and an aging standpoint has been avoided for so long, yeah. which is the inspiration, as Corey said, of this show and the company as a whole yep. and in using a vehicle like this to get messaging out sooner and more often, I think, can help in the long term. And I agree. And that's why, you know, when we bumped into each other, almost at the same time, um, you guys were looking at, you know, for us, and we were looking for you, and it just worked out perfectly. But, you know, again, it's all about education. Yes. You know, from having, you know, Prosecutor Lucido here, mm -hmm. to attorneys, to, you know, the more that you can educate something that you don't know anything about or little about, we're very pro-education. And so that's why doing things like this and seminars, and we're all, we're all for it. All for it. That's great. I think that some of the staff that you guys have, some of the directors are actual teachers too, aren't they? Yeah, we have uh, one gentleman uh, teaches down at Wayne State University um, and Warsham College. His name's uh, Dominic Castorino. So he goes out and he's training the next generation of funeral directors uh, coming up. So, That's yeah. so cool. So you're sort of spearheading all components. Yeah. yeah. yeah really up are. and comers and then obviously prospective clients. You know, and, and one thing that we have that, that – that not a lot of places have is we have a, a, a very senior seasoned gentleman on staff. Um, Larry Calcaterra comes in Monday through Friday at age 81 every day, Monday through Friday to oversee things, you know, to put his stamp of approval on mm -hmm. things. And so it's great having that, just that, that overall vision and his overall goal. He started this, him and Ed Wujak started this and, and from what it was to what it is now um, is, is just, you know, we're very blessed and very fortunate. And, uh, but he just comes in every day and he just wants to make sure as, you know, he kind of steps back a little bit mm -hmm. that it's still being done the way he wants it and the vision that him and Ed Wujek set up for it to be. Well, and I think that goes back to some of the things that we've said in our previous podcast, like as we age and, and after retirement, sometimes we feel a little down and dumps, like what are, what's our next step? What are we going to do? Sometimes people lose their purpose. Yeah. And the reason he can show up to work every day and wants to is because he still has that purpose. Exactly. That's probably why he's doing so and, great. And he's still got that zest. Yep. That's right. Yeah, for sure. 
You can sure. if you can learn anything from that, that's yeah. a huge message uh, to take you, away. You guys You've got to keep excellent. it moving. Yeah. You guys yeah. are doing an excellent job and of he's carrying just it a, on too. Thank you. He's just, and he's just a great guy to be just a wealth of knowledge. Just a great guy to be around. I can't We're imagine fortunate. I would like it, I would love to talk to him and just see like how many things have changed from when he started it to now. Oh. Just the technology and yeah. probably the processes that you yeah. guys use behind the scenes. Yeah. No I, I, it's night, night and day. day. I was going to say it has to be. I mean, when he started, there was no cremation. You that know, sounds there wild, was no right? Yeah. Cremation. <laughs> cremation. I didn't and think of that. Like, it's like 70% now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think, I'm so, I mean, that's that. just wow. one small thing that pops to the top of my head right away. That's, what he never, they never did that. Wow. Everyone was buried and went to church, and and we've just had such a paradigm shift in society shift that uh -huh. seven out of ten are cremated. Seven out of ten are cremated. Whoa! I had no idea. Me yeah. I hadn't considered it, yeah. but now that I am thinking it through, that that's a big yeah. number. Huge! Wow! So, just shows you where it's gone. Just in his career, his you know seventy years of being a funeral director. See, we could have you on here. I just, me and Paul yeah. want to learn all the history. We, <laughs> we just can do hours, yeah. of stuff. hours. I just want to hear all that stuff. You pick Mr. Calcaterra's brain, we're picking yours. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but to why we're here, but that stuff very, is very interesting. And, and yes. I will tell our audience, like, definitely look for more um, behind the scenes and stuff like that. We're very be excited great. to be able to, to sort of show that um, family history. Yep. Because I think that's all something that we can relate to. But we are here to talk about pre-planning. Mm -hmm. and sort of what those first steps are. What does that consultation look like? And that decision-making decision, decision -making process uh, for the client and how you help them along in that. And so uh, I see all different gamuts. We see people in their 40s coming in to mm -hmm. their 60s to getting close to retiring or just retired or maybe someone's transitioning to a nursing home. So we always say, in, in a huge champion of the, there's never an obligation to come in and sit down and talk with us. I'll sit down with you for a half hour or two hours um, and we'll pick each other's brains. Because really that's where it starts at because it's still surprising to me how many people walk in and just kind of don't know what they want or are unaware of what they can or can't do. For sure. And so we always, the most basic question where we start as when I sit down with someone is, is what do you want for your funeral? What do you want done? How do you want to be remembered? Mm -hmm. You know, um, our, our company's slogan is life remembered. You know, and my, again, my first question is, is how do you want to be remembered? Do you want visitation? Do you want burial? Do you want cremation? Um, are we going to go to church? Are we not going to? So that's kind of where we start is, is that in the prearranging processes, how do we, what do you want done to be remembered? And so we'll kind of start there and we'll kind of give them all the different options and, and we'll say, you know, um, as far as burial, do you have a cemetery in mind? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different cemeteries uh, around. Um, you know, we use the Mon Elliott group a lot, which is Resurrection and Mon Olivet and, and Guardian Angels now in Rochester. We go to White Chapel quite a bit. You know, I, I shared before we came in, we're even going to Gaylord today. Um, and then tomorrow we're going up to, to Harbor Beach. So wow. I've been as far as Houghton Hancock for burials. I mean, we go all over. Um, but again, if that's all part of the, especially for something like that, it's so important to say, I have plots in Escanaba, or I want to go to the National Cemetery, um, not in Holly, which is the new one, but Battle Creek. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's got what they think and how they want done. And so that's the importance of prearranging is let's get that all down on paper. Because so often kids will come in and nothing against second generation or, or kids. It's just like, well, let's just do the most simple, basic things because, you know, we got 5,000 other things to do. And, yeah, mom and dad are important, but we need to get this done, 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 done. Yeah. And that's not what mom and dad wanted or someone wanted. And so, again, that's why it's always so important to come in. Let's start to get things down paper and go from there. I would think more often than not, too, the children probably don't know what benefits their parents have or if they even have plots or any of the resources that are even available for them to help, especially if they're a veteran or things like that. So that's like a whole nother component. We, yeah, we could do a whole other show just on veterans benefits. Right. You know, the most important thing that I tell people on a daily basis is write it down. Yeah. No matter what, if it's, if it's your wishes, no matter if you have property, no matter if you are a coin collector and you want some to go to this child and some to go here, write <clears> it down because it will avoid confrontation. Not only that, but it'll just it'll uh, it'll make sure that you get your wishes carried out to what you want. So, what type of questions beyond? Um, I guess how in depth do you really go in these pre 
pre-planning. Pre-plannings? Yeah. So it's really, I let the individual steer it. You know, sometimes people will want to come in and part of our, our consultation or part of the pre-planning process is that ahead of time, we gather what we call vital statistics. That's what will go on a death certificate when someone passes. And so the state wants to know an individual's birthplace, parents' names, mother's maiden name. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of kids don't know their grandma's maiden name, especially if it's some big, long Polish, I'm Polish, <laughs> some big, long Polish name with 80 letters, <clears throat> how to spell it. And so, you know, we can get all that information from the individual ahead of time. We can pick out casket. You can pick out the cards that you want for visitation with, say, the 23rd Psalm on the back. Okay. You know, I have a favorite picture when I was camping that I want to be used in all the, the material, uh, media material. So, I mean, you can pick out flowers. You can pick out, I want my lunch at X facility, and here's the menu because I always like Polish food. I want to make sure there's, you know, city chicken and kielbasa. I mean, you can, good to me. you can get everything. You can pick out the readings at church, you know, if it's certain readings that you like and songs that you like if we're going to have a church service. I mean, you can almost kind of lock everything down so that when something happens, um, it's just like I said, a picture in clothing. Um, very simple for your next of kin to take care of or your family to take care of. And then sometimes people say, I just I just want to fill out the basics. I'm going to let my I'm going to make the couple decisions, mm -hmm. but the kids or my spouse or whomever else can do the rest. Can do the rest. Yeah. So, we let the person steer the ship. You know. You you brought up something if I could just uh, circle back here for yeah, a well. second. You, you mentioned the younger generations. Yep. Let's assume for a moment that a lot of pre-planning didn't happen or none at all. Yes. And this person comes in and they're we're in this distracted society and, and everything now and I have I don't have time for this. Yep. What, how do you bridge that gap? How do you go through that process if they really don't know? You know the A's and the B's and the C's and yeah. you help them fill that, but what yeah. if they just don't have the information? How do you acquire that? You know, it, it's it's the state will, uh, from a death certificate standpoint, you know, there's we can go with unknown. You know, they don't like us to do that, but we'll go with unknown. And the longer it takes, you know, kids or somebody to get us that information, the longer it takes for us to generate a death certificate which means the longer that it takes for us to stop Social Security, to stop pensions, for you to sell a house or property or cars. So that's why it's imperative if you know the information about your parents and your education and your job. I had one gentleman come in the other day and said, what did dad do? Oh, he worked at GM. What did he do? I don't know. He, he was, he was uh, clerical or whatever. The guy turned out the guy was a senior vice president. <laughs> Now, again, <laughs> wow. that, that's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. And so, again, we put senior vice president on the desk trivia instead of clerical in the automotive. But it's just, you know, maybe not important to, to the child, but that's something that the guy worked his life for and I'm sure was proud life of the remembered. fact that he, was, that he was what he was. Um, so not a way to honor them. It is. You know, someone 100 years from now is going to look back on their great-grandpa's death certificate because people love to do genealogy. What did yeah, he do? Yeah, that's wow. He was only huge a clerical. Today. No, he mm -hmm. was a senior vice president for General Motors. I mean, that that's huge. Yeah. Um, and so again, that's why it comes to the importance of if this is something that we wished everybody would do. Um, again, if someone wants to come in and just put their wishes down on paper, that's one option. If someone wants to come in and then say, "We'll pick out everything. Here's a cost," mm -hmm. that individual then has the option to lock those costs in and pay from ahead of time. Um, and whether they use it 10 days or 100 years from now, the prices are locked. The prices, everything was placed in escrow. Michigan has one of the, the, one of the most stringent laws when it comes to prepaying a funeral. So there's prearranging, write our, our wishes down, prepaying, locking costs in. As I said, Michigan has one of the, the most stringent prepaying laws so that we're forced to turn that money over to an escrow company, kind of like building a house. Mm -hmm. So that if something should happen to us, we have a fire, a tornado, an individual relocates to Florida, um, that money is 100% transferable because it's being held in escrow. And then that escrow company is locking costs at today's prices. So there's not a lot of things that you can buy today and use 30 years later with no price increase. I don't know of any. Um, no. And, and so, you know, that again is one of the benefits. If you're in your 60s, 70s, and you know your mom and dad lived to their 90s, and you know you have life expectancy up till then, or or or, or longevity. Why wouldn't you? You know. Sure. Um, and people say, "Why well, I can't come up with that kind of?" Well, the escrow company lets you spread things out. You can take it out for three, five, or seven years and make payments on it. 
you know, and you're paying just for that cost. It's not like an insurance policy where you're taking out a hundred thousand dollar policy. If your funeral's five thousand, you're going to pay five thousand for three years, and when it's done, it's done. Yeah, you don't have interest. No, it's, you're not paying this for thirty years, getting getting some lump sum cash benefit at the end. It's just to cover the cost of the funeral. So again, it's it's That's a, a big benefit. It's huge. actually. And it's something that people don't know a lot about. They just assume that they got to come in with a check for ten thousand. Mm -hmm. I don't have ten thousand sitting around. Well, you don't have to. You again, spread it out over time. Wow, I didn't know that either. Did you? No, I didn't. No, I, I, I really didn't. <laughs> and for our listeners to to understand a little bit deeper, just to close off on that one topic is whether someone is fully preplanned or whether they are, it kind of caught them off guard. Yep. In my own experience, sixty to seventy of my family members and friends have come through the Wujik Calcutta family between sixteen and twenty five. That is obviously going to continue because there's so many cousins and such. Yep. Uh, that that is where my wishes are to be. And and just for our audience to know. Whether you are the most prepared or the most unprepared, these guys are extraordinary in helping take you through the process at, and we know this in, in the type of work that we do, that isn't always the most fun thing to do. It's a very emotional time. Mm -hmm. They are true professionals and experts at this. So uh, Thank you. definitely heed the warning in terms of the pre-planning. That'll certainly help with the stress and anxiety, but these guys are simply the best. Thank you. Appreciate the compliment. I do want to mention too, you mentioned... Um, the cremation services and the funeral services, but you guys also offer some grief support. We do. So we have, we're in a partnership with Dr. John Canine, who comes in to uh, the building um, every other Wednesday, um, and we'll do a group setting. Those take place at 25 Mile in Van Dyke, and whether we have the, the privilege or honor of serving your family, or if it's used in another funeral home where the death was out of state and you're just having a hard time, everyone's welcome to come to the grief counseling sessions. Um, again, seven o'clock every other Wednesday. Um, and that if something needs, someone needs more than that, I know Dr. Canine's willing to meet, um, say it was a, a sudden tragic death or, or a young person. You know, it's, it's a lot to bear. I mean, it it's is. a lot to handle. Um, he's always available to meet with someone in a more private setting, be it at someone's home or be it in, in a Starbucks if it's, you know, you want some noise. He's, he's great to work with and we're fortunate to have a good partnership with him. Because grief is grief, it comes it's and heavy. goes in waves. It is, comes and it and can be really waves. heavy. Yeah. You guys have thought of everything. Yeah, yeah that's it, what I was just gonna say. <laughs> we really, I mean, we try. You know, again, we've talked about pre-planning, but like you said, Paul, if someone passes unexpectedly or you just didn't get time to come in to arrange us, we will take care of everything. You know, cemeteries, luncheons, flowers, grief counseling. Um, you know, we do overseas shipments um, oh for gosh. some of those. We, you know, out of state shipments. You know, if someone passes in Florida. Just call us 24 hours a day. We'll take care of everything. The last thing you want to do is kind of find a funeral home in Oregon or Kelly. You don't know anybody. You're just kind of picking somebody. We got relationships all over the country and all over the world. So um, just call Incredible. us. <laughs> Incredible. I'm a little bit stunned right now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Too. It really is. Wow. When you really start thinking about all of the different logistics yeah. like that, I'm I pre -planning mean. planning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about me. I have a place in Florida, too. <laughs> so if I'm in Florida and it happens, I know I know what we got to do. Well, uh, well, yeah. uh, right. So that hits home a little bit for you too, yeah, and again, yeah. like that's why it's important to share these messages because when you're when you're talking about all those different things, you just don't know what's gonna strike a chord with yeah. someone. Because you're mm -hmm. right, right? You would probably want to be here, yeah. so I would. And you know what, Paul? Too for a lot of the, when we do a lot of snowbirds. You know, people that go down for three, six, five months down to Florida. Mm. Um, we have a package with with a company that we work with that will bring a person if they pass away out of state back here to Michigan for two hundred eighty five bucks. It's a one-time charge of $285. Oh, my goodness. It covers the funeral home, the airfare. I mean, death certificates, uh, the, the the embalming process down in Florida. If you didn't have that, it would run you about four grand. So it's cheaper for me to die <laughs> than just buy a plane ticket. <laughs> exactly. regular. Yeah. <laughs> we don't funny. want that, Corey. It's right. not funny, but I'm just saying. No, but airfare is expensive anymore. Especially those snowbirds. I mean, when I tell the, a lot of our snowbirds, uh, <laughs> us, you know, that that exists, they're like, wait, what? Yeah, it's it's a huge thing. And what we're seeing on on our just to add to that on our side of the industry or the businesses, mm -hmm. folks are actually relocating into a senior community mm -hmm. part-time yep. for the snowbird season, living there year-round in a community, and then they come back really? at this time of year. Okay. Yeah. So I could see how that at the more advanced age could present Yeah, And there's no age option. restrictions. It's a huge it's a huge savings. If I could spend 285 285 bucks or $4,000, right. what are you going to do? 
right. and how do they do that so basically it's it's a it's a it's a travel it's called the travel protection plan and it covers anywhere in the world so let's just say you go to italy and are traveling and pass away in italy brings you back here um all you would have to do is reach out to me at the funeral home um and it's again we fill out some paperwork it's a one-time charge of 285 bucks the only caveat is that death occurs 50 miles and out we cover zero to 50 the travel plan covers 50 miles to the end of the earth so it's a great thing to have that's unreal it's a great thing to have it is what oh. about when i'm at, what if what happens if i'm on a cruise ship does the same thing <laughs> <laughs> we had a we had a gal that I'm was on sure a cruise ship going to australia and See we could, I mean? the, the travel plan covered her to come back from Australia. You said the ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. Well, yeah. and after 25 years experience, I imagine that you've seen quite a lots. bit. Seen some things. So these, I mean, this is just you know, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg of all the of all the, just for time, just the, all the things that are available that people don't like, don't think about or know. There's been three already. Yeah. I mean, Good we think stuff. we know because we've all been to funerals, yeah. but uh, no. you don't. There's have lots to know. Any idea when it comes to it? No. And one thing for our veterans, our veterans viewers, is the one thing that I can't stress enough is um, whether you want honors, because veterans are eligible for honors. Mm -hmm. And what honors is they'll we provide a flag, taps, try to get a 21-gun salute, but mm -hmm. that generation is getting older and older. And the younger generation of veterans aren't joining the, the VFWs and the posts like they used to. Mm -hmm. So getting a 21-gun salute is becoming more and more of a challenge. But the most important document for a veteran to have is that DD-214. Um, called discharge papers. And so if if we can't find those, I can't get honors. I can't give a flag. Um, you know, it's so it, it puts, it's a great thing that a veteran's eligible for. Yeah. But if I have that missing link and they can't find it, I can't get it for them. Especially going to Great Lakes. Great Lakes is one of the, the two national cemeteries that we have in Michigan. I'm up in Holly, mm -hmm. um, which is for a spouse and a dependent child and the veteran. But I can't get you into Great Lakes without that DD-214. Mm -hmm. We can try and put a tracer on it, but that can take six weeks to six months. And you know, what do we do in that holding time? We just say, sorry, right. we can't, we can't, yeah. we, we gotta make a plan B. So if, if a veteran out there doesn't have a, a discharge paper, um, you can always find one through the Michigan Trust, the Veterans VA Trust Fund in Lansing. They'll put a tracer on it. Um, a lot of discharge were lost in the fire in St. Louis. And so, but they do have ways to verify veteran service but again, that's not something that should be left to the last minute is let's scramble and find a, right. a, a DD-214. Let's be proactive and get it done now. And that's a really big honor. And it really does it add a lot to the service um, in general. It is. It absolutely does. It does. It's, I it's, mean, it's something that you remember. You hear those taps notes even after this long, it still chokes you up. Those yes, taps, taps notes just kind of just, just, it makes, goes right through you. Yep. And that is, and I do think that if veterans, if they're if they're out there and they're listening, I definitely think that it is a benefit that you should look into. Yeah. Um, Great Lakes in Holly is beautiful. That's where my grandma is. Yeah. We were just there a couple of weeks ago for Mother's Day, and it's so well taken care of. And and here's another. And it's an option for as, you as far as pre-planning too. You know, a veteran and a wife can save about ten thousand dollars by going to Holly as opposed to going to another cemetery. Mm -hmm. Just because of the benefits, the the plots, the opening and closing, the headstone, the vaults, all that's provided mm -hmm. for a veteran. I mean, you know, if you were to go to a local cemetery here, it's about a $10,000 savings, mm -hmm. which is huge. You know, and like you said, all the things are, it's a, there's a lake in the middle of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. They're doing, they're building some other stuff out there right yeah. now, some they, other monuments they and They can't stuff. keep up. It's, unf it's true. Yeah, they can't Just, keep up. Yeah, just, yeah, when we were going, we were trying to find out, like, where is, where yeah. is she? You know, I'll go there in a month, Didn't a month later, like all this other stuff is yeah, here that was wasn't, like, there. wasn't there. Yeah. So it's sad, and yeah. it's a very real thing, and, and I do think people need to just at least start to think about what yeah. you want otherwise. Because even those benefits, it's amazing how many people don't know that they're eligible for those benefits. You know, if they're mm -hmm. a veteran, that you know. I, I never knew that, mm -hmm. you know? So again, it's all part of the process of start a conversation of what's available to me, what do I want, and how do I go about doing it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that, that would be my recommendation. So can you tell our audience a little bit about where they can find you? So I run, that, we have two buildings. We have our Sterling Heights facility at the corner of 16 Mile and Shainer. Um, that was opened in 1984. Um, then we opened our second building in 25 Mile in Van Dyke in 1998. Um, I run back and forth daily. 
Do um, you? I do. I, and some days I feel like a chicken with my head cut <laughs> off. I, I don't know where I'm going to be. Up and down M53. Up and down, well, you can't take Chainer now because <laughs> right. everything's under construction. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it takes a little longer to get everywhere now. Um, but those roads are being fixed, thankfully. Um, but no, so some of the mornings I'll start this morning. I was at 16 mile. I'm going to go out to 25. I'm going to go back to 25. And so um, either facility, um, you can contact me at or I, I've met people at their homes. I, I do house calls. Um, met them at Starbucks. You know, we had a, a I'll go wherever. Um, but uh, the main number to get a hold of us is 586-677-4000. That's incredible. I, I just reach out. That is all I can say, especially when we're having everybody come on and Let's do these talk. educational. That's it. Let's talk. It's no pressure. No. I, of course, there are some questions that you probably have. Don't be afraid to ask yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing this for 25 years. Yep. He's If he doesn't know the answer, uh, he'll And he'll I just got out. a degree in 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I really feel that way. This is incredible. It's not too often me and Paul are like, yeah, hmm. seriously. You know, I, I mean, we other, do this for a living, <laughs> not the funeral portion, no. but it, the question to be asking. this, to be this, uh, I can, I have to imagine that, you know, seven, eight out of 10 people are probably yeah. a little bit blown away they as really we are. are. I believe they and, really are. And, and I've experienced a lot of death in my family like, for a long time, this. Yeah. I have this but this is, wow. Every time. Yeah. I mean, we could spend a whole show talking about cremation because there's a lot of laws that people yeah. don't know about for cremation. You know, um, you can't authorize yourself to be cremated. Somebody else has to do it. Okay, see, nope, didn't know that either. So is that like that, a, a durable power or a power of attorney? Well, power of attorney something? ends at death. And right. so that's people true. walk yeah, in all the right, time right. yes. saying, well, I'm part of, well, that you can just, you know, basically chuck yeah, that out. That's done. Um, who, are, who can authorize that then? We're a majority rule state in Michigan. So if I was to pass away and I wanted to be cremated, my wife would authorize me to be cremated and vice versa. Sure. If my wife was deceased, it goes to the it goes to my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, majority of the kids. Oh wow. So if you have three, it's two, two to one. And if those, you know, and w- what we run into a problem situation, again, as society changes, is maybe one kid cut themselves off. Maybe one kid's incarcerated. Maybe one kid doesn't like cremation. And so, again, not having this conversation ahead of time saying I want to be cremated and my kids are all over and don't agree with that, it's a it's an issue. And if I can't get two of the three, cremation may not happen. Wow. You know? Uh, there, so we've kind of we've kind of had the legislature change a couple things to you can now appoint. If you think again with the the, the the spouse and the kids example, if you don't think your kids and your spouse will authorize you to be cremated, you can now appoint your hairdresser, your neighbor, one of the kids. So again, it's called the funeral representative designation. We have the forms at the funeral home. They got to be notarized. Um, we're a notary, um, but it's again, it's something that is an important issue. That especially with cremation, don't leave cremation issues till the end. So if uh, if it can't get to a majority decision that way, mm-hmm. it just reverts back to burial. It must go to a burial or a mausoleum. Yeah. Okay. It has to revert back. Wow. Yeah. And there's a lot of family dynamics that go into anything. There is. Especially the added emotion of of the loss of that person. I can see that's a big problem. You know, it's the old saying is every, emotions come out at weddings and yeah, funerals. Yeah, it's a problem. It becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. Mm-hmm. So again, the, 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 again, just another aspect that we see on a daily basis that factors in why, why prearranging and pre-planning is so important. Don't be afraid to have the hard conversations. No. You don't have to last all day. And we'll make it fun like this. You know, everyone, yes. everyone, that's the one thing I hear is when people come in and say, I thought it was going to be down and somber and we laugh, we're joking. You know, we, they, we some people said, wanted to buy me a drink. They're like, let's go across the street to the Hamlin pub and have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I got to I got to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I could, I would, but I can't. Um, and so we, you got to make things lighthearted. You know, you got to laugh. You know, it's, it's, the other thing I'll say is, is that especially for parents and kids, um, don't look to your kids for permission to do this. You know, it, oftentimes mm-hmm. people will come to me, well, we're going to talk to the kids and we're going to see if it's okay with them or we're going to see if it's okay if we do this. And, and my response to me was that don't wait for the kid's permission because it won't come. Um, of course. Yeah. You never want to think about no. that. You don't want to think about your mom or dad not being here. Right. Um, and so, again, it's a gift. We, it's a gift, if you want to call it that, that your kids will appreciate when something happens. My mom passed away last February. I made her and my dad sit down a couple years ago and do all this. And so, again, Mm -hmm. something happened. Even being the funeral director, it's weird being the funeral director and the grieving son. Right. But it was all done. At least that was a huge chunk of things you didn't have to think about. 
Mike, you gave the phone number. Can you give that again? And you guys have a great website uh, yes. that I've seen many times. Thank you. And I think it's important for our viewers to know that. So contact number again, 586-677-4000. And the website is wujackcalcaterra.com. And I'll let you guys put that on the screen. Yes. yes. Like we will. Too long. And they can, they can uh, read the obituaries up there, the memory, leave leave a, a memory, yep. and uh, the music plays, if great, I recall. Yeah, we got a great interactive website where yeah. you can send pictures up. You know, the obits are on there. Um, we're putting the videos. So a lot of times people will bring us like 150 pictures with music, and we put that up there, um, making it an individual's page. You know, that's – and then that goes out. You know, there's no more newspapers. I shouldn't say there are. Right. It's – it's not oh, it's far between, what they yeah. were yeah. when I started even 20 some years ago. Yeah. It's all online. And so it's a great, great resource. You also have a really good planning tool. So if you're interested, you're not necessarily ready to talk, there's a fantastic yep. planning tool yep. on there. There's lots of resources yes. and different links that you can click. Yes. Um, there's an entire page where you can read his and <laughs> his <My> bio. biography. <laughs> um, and also, you know, lots of, of, the, of the other directors that work there, their yep. biography. So you can just get a chance to get to know nope. them a little bit more be, before you come in. But that planning tool is fantastic. And I do recommend that you go on wujatcalcaterra.com. If you have any questions for Mike or his team, again, you can reach him at 586-677-4000. If you have uh, topic suggestions or you have any comments or questions for me, you can reach me at kl at theseniormovers.com or at 586-204-8500. I definitely think you need to subscribe to the Senior Podcast. You can subscribe on Facebook. You can subscribe on, on YouTube, YouTube. At the Senior Companies. On Spotify. Yeah. We have Instagram. We have so many different resources, not only that the senior companies have, but through our amazing partners like uh, Wujet, Calcaterra, and Sun. So. And, and guys, again, you know, thanks for having me. Uh, the great way to reach out people, great way for people to get education. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what you guys are doing are fantastic, and I think it's a great partnership. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank both of you, and thanks for having me today. Thank you, Mike. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you very we much. Can't, I can't wait to learn more already. So I, <laughs> yeah. I keep you on here all day, but you know. All right, so... Like